Hey folks, welcome to topic three in economics, where we are start to move on from looking at economic systems as well as the various uh, principles of economics, such as scarcity and the four factors of production, to actually being able to look at supply and demand. Um, so for this first, this is a two week uh, unit. So this first week, we're just going to simply focus on supply. Um, we're going to look at the, fit, uh, the what is supply, the law of supply, look at what is a supply curve as well as the, how to graph one, and also what are the factors that shift that um, supply curve to the left or to the right. Um, and as well, just get you set up well for the uh, unit next week where we focus on demand, bring it all together and actually focus on price and quantity and how that all works. Now, I'm just going to focus on supply for right now. So I'm going to share my screen. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I went present. All right. So first of all, what is supply in, in economics? When do you, what, what do you mean by the term supply? First of all, it refers to what you believe it refers to. So it refers to the willingness and ability of producers, so people who make stuff, to offer goods and services for sale. This includes haircuts. This includes Netflix, like the amount of mo movies that are supplied by a studio over a good amount of time. It supplies. Uh, it refers to um, like phone makers, technology, like how many iPhones are made in a day or in a year, uh, and how many are supplied to people like you and I. Now, the law of supply says this. If the price of a product increases, supply is going to increase. Quantity supplied in the market overall, like for example, if iPhones are being supplied, if the price of an iPhone went up to let's say $1,000 from $500, iPhone production is going to dramatically increase, increasing the quantity supplied for consumers. Apple is going to, to capitalize on the jump in the price from $500 to $1,000 to be able to um, make take full advantage of the profit and sell as many as they can. So if you're running a business and you realize that your product, if, it, if there's a higher price for what you're, you're making, you're going to make more of it in order to get a higher profit. On the reverse side, if the price of a product decreases, quantity supplied will decrease, meaning that if the price of your product decreases, you're going to sell less of it because you'd rather invest your money in something else or some other uh, alternative or um, vocation that's actually going to give you more money uh, with a different price. So you're going to shift resources away from producing things for re re producing things that have a lower price into things that have a higher price. So law of supply, if price increases, supply increases. If supply if price decreases, supply decreases. Very basic. Um, and it goes basically back with the profit incentive. Uh, here's an example here. If the price of cotton goes up, a farmer who's growing corn in Indiana, for example, will stop growing corn and then shift to growing cotton the next growing season because it's worth more and has a higher price. They'll get more profit because of the higher price. All right. A supply schedule is basically like a table that gives you a certain amount of values at, at price. Um, so basically what you'll see in, the, in a supply schedule is it's like an uh, X and Y table that you see in algebra. When we graph supply curves, it looks just like you like it does in algebra. You're going to look at the price and the quantity, and at a certain number in price, price being the Y variable, X, uh, uh, quantity being the X variable, at a certain quantity, there's a certain price. So then you'll plot that point and eventually you start to notice that the line is going to start moving upwards. It shows how much of a good or service an individual producer is willing to sell, at a certain price. A market supply schedule basically looks at all producers in a market and says, how much are you all total as a group willing to sell at a certain price? So for example, let's say that three different companies make iPhones. That's not necessarily true in the real world, but let's say that three companies make iPhones. A market supply schedule would go, would be like some, like a mathematician going to each one and saying, look, at this price, let's say at $500, you all are willing to make 250 iPhones total. Okay, that's how all three together, all three producers in the market overall will make for that at that price. Then maybe at $500, they'll make um, 500 phones. At $700, they'll make 700 phones. At $1,000, they'll make 1,000 phones. And so the higher the price, you're going to see the supply start to increase. Here's an example of a supply schedule. So, for example, this would be like an individual uh, producer. This would be like just an independent supply curve. So, for the price of stuffed animals, let's say you make stuffed animals. At five, 
at, at the price of five dollars, you will not make any stuffed animals. Let's say that you you lose money if you because uh, it takes six bucks to make them, but then if you sell them at five, you'll lose a dollar for every single one you sell. So you won't do that. But let's say the price jumps to ten, so then you might sell a hundred overall. And then as the price slowly increases, let's say it jumps up to forty five, you're going to sell up to eight hundred stuffed animals because that's when you're going to start capitalizing more and more on the profit. Let's go over to Starbucks, Starbs, for many of you who like uh, the coffee there. Um, looking at the supply schedule, you can start to see how the price of lattes at $0, none are going to get sold because would you lose money. Now, if you started shifting at three uh, at a quantity of three co cups of coffee, three lattes, if, uh, if if lattes sold for a dollar, three threes would be sold. If lattes were sold at $2, it would jump up to 6 if lattes were sold at three dollars, then it would jump up to nine. And then if you jump up all, if the price jumped up to six dollars per latte, which would be really expensive, um, it would jump up to about nineteen or eighteen. It looks like a supply curve. This line right here, this supply curve, kind of like what you'd see as a positive function or has a positive slope in algebra. It basically shows us how much quant uh, quantity supplied or how much a, a producer is willing to supply at a given price. There's also a market supply curve. This would basically be like going to that Apple or that I those three iPhone producers I just talked about and actually asking all of them at a certain price how, much are, how many are you willing to sell. From there, they would be able to tell me the answer. And here this is kind of like what it looks like. Let's say there's uh, two different farmer uh, supply markets. One is willing to sell for the price of an ice cream cone and then the quantity at a, So let's say you go in to shop and they can, they're going to sell you ice cream cones. For Farish's, they will sell you uh, $2. They will sell you three ice cream cones. If you jump the price up to three, they'll sell you around four or five or six. Now, on the other hand, you have Saeed's uh, supply uh, right, across, right across town, and they also sell ice cream cones to be competitive with Farish's. And at $2, they'll sell you four. Now, you can kind of see how there's a difference between what they're willing to sell you and what, how much they're willing to sell you for based on the different prices. So what a market supply curve would average these two, and then overall, in your town, the market of ice cream cone suppliers who also sell farming equipment, um, at $2, they will all sell you an average of seven, or total of seven, excuse me, a total of seven. So supply curves follow the law of supply. Let's look at this. So if price increases, I'll go up this, I'll go up one more. If supply, if price right here, the X variable or Y variable, excuse me, if price increases, if it jumps, quantity supplied, the, the uh, dot along this line, the supply curve is going to shift up and to the right. It's going to have a positive slope. It's going to shift up and to the right if price increases. So the num as the number as this number increases, this quantity along the line is going to jump up from uh, left to right. Now on the reverse side, it also reflects the law of supply. If price decreases, the quantity supplied is going to be decreased as well. So at six dollars, though, they're willing to sell you about eighteen um, cups of lattes. Now, if the price decreases to five, then you're going to lose about three. Starbucks will only sell you 15 at that price. They're not going to make any more because then they might start they won't make any more money. All right. And then also, why are more international players going to the major league baseball or going to major league baseball? It also reflects the law of supply. So the supply of players increased where prices are high. And if this little thing wasn't in the way, oh, what's it doing? So in Major League Baseball, more and more foreign-born players started to go into the league where prices were higher if you had more talent. So where they came from, they weren't offered as much money with a contract um, for the same set of skills that they would have when they would play here in the States. So they'd come here to the States, they'd join Major League Baseball with the, being really talented as they are, and then they'd make more money because, frankly, um, they had the opportunity to do so. So they'd so as more and more uh, as pay started to increase, more and more foreign-born players started to come into the MLB, um, which increased the further supply. So you can kind of see how this has that kind of sl positive slope. 
All right. Without further ado, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop this video. I'm also going to edit it because it sounds hideous. <laughs>